Welcome to Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School. Sometimes we use designations or titles for scripture sections that the Bible itself doesn't use, but we use them to kind of create packages that we can understand a little bit. That's true of Paul's missionary journeys. The Bible never talks about his first missionary journey, his second missionary journey, his third missionary journey. We just number them every time he comes back to Antioch, and we start a new one. And so they, he's always sent out from that church in Antioch. The, the center of the, of the Christian church at this point in history seems to have moved more from Jerusalem and more toward Antioch, farther north. And, and it's this Antioch church that sends Paul out. The sending out of Paul and Barnabas in Acts chapter 13 is where we, we highlight this one as the first missionary journey. And I want you to notice the role of the Holy Spirit here in Acts chapter 13 verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. And we don't know how the Holy Spirit said that. Did they hear a voice? Did they get a note from heaven? Was this a kind of a feeling that they all had that, the, that these two ought to go out? We don't really know. But they're gonna be sent. And this is interesting. It's, it's an it's a intentional sending of these guys out to take the gospel message elsewhere. This is a tiny church at this point. Uh, Jerusalem, Antioch, maybe a few pockets, other places, but no, not an extensive Christian church, not an extensive religion. And so they have this sense that there are people out there that don't know the Savior and they need to get out there and tell them about him. So they're going to send Paul and Barnabas, or Saul and Barnabas, on this trip. So in verse 4, sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Well, Barnabas was a Cypriot. He was from Cyprus. And I guess if I'm going on a missionary trip and I've never done this kind of thing before and I really don't know how this works, I think I'm going to start at home. And that's what Barnabas does. They start in his home, home country, home island of Cyprus. They proclaim the gospel from one end to the other of Cyprus. Um, and then in verse 9, you have an interesting line. Luke writes, but Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, and then it goes on to say what Paul said. We talked about it in Paul's conversion that many people think that God somehow in that conversion said, your name was Saul, now your name's gonna be Paul, and that never happens. This is where it changes, and it doesn't really change. I think Paul grew up with two names. He grew up with a Hebrew name, Saul, and he grew up with a Greek name, Paul, or Roman name, Paul. And in the Gentile world, as soon as he begins the ministry of the Gentile world, Luke begins to use his Gentile name, or his Greek name, Paul. Paul means little. Now, whether that's a nickname for him, uh, and he was small in stature, I don't know. But that's the significance of the name. God doesn't change the name. And, uh, and I'm sure most of us grew up thinking God at some point changed his name. But this is where it happens in this first missionary journey. As soon as he's no longer among the Jews, they quit using his Hebrew name and begin using his, his Greek name. So Paul and, uh, and Barnabas, move around through a relatively small area in the, in the first missionary journey compared to the other ones, mostly Asia Minor. They start out to go to Antioch. There's two Antiochs. There's a Syrian Antioch, which is where the church is, and a Pisidian Antioch, which is where they go now, which is in Asia Minor. And they go to Antioch, and it's here that John Mark goes home. Now, that doesn't seem like a real important thing. John Mark was along with him. John Mark was Barnabas' relative and John Mark had begun that journey with them, but when they get to Antioch, John Mark goes home. And we aren't sure why. There are some conjectures. When you get to Antioch, what's in front of you is a bunch of mountains. And maybe John Mark said, whoa, we don't have a four-wheeler, we, we don't have a car. He didn't know what a car was. We're not, I'm not walking up those mountains. I'm getting on the boat and going back home. Or maybe John Mark said, you know, I, I didn't know I was signing on for this Gentile stuff. I thought I was going to talk to Jews, and you guys are starting to talk to a lot of Gentiles. I'm going home. Or maybe John Mark said, you know, when we started this, Barnabas was getting top billing. My, my relative was getting top billing, but the farther we go into this, the more I see Paul getting top billing and Barnabas being the secondary person. 
think I'll go home. Don't know why he went home. You can ask him when you get to heaven. It will become a point of contention when Paul and Barnabas talk about going out again after they get back to Antioch after this particular uh, trip. When they talk about going out again, it will split them. Barnabas will say, let's take John Mark. And Paul will say, nope, he walked out on us the last time. I'm not giving him a second chance. Barnabas will plead for him. Paul will refuse. And Barnabas will go his way. And Paul will go his way. Uh, and you're actually going to get two missionaries for the price of one out of the deal, but the, the disagreement is over whether John Mark goes or not. They minister at a place called Antioch. They uh, preach in Iconium, in Lystra, in Derby. They get stoned in one place, left for dead, and then they repeat, repeat their steps and go back. They come back to Antioch, and when they get back to Antioch, some things begin to, to pop, to happen, and we'll get to that the next time. But I want you to notice the urgency, the drive that these people have to get the gospel message out, that they will go on the road, probably making a living as tent maker while he's out there, but they'll go on the road to bring this gospel message to people they've never met and may never see again.